Welcome to worship. Almighty and ever-living God, you invite us deeper into your world, your people, your Lent. May this time be one of outward focus, seeking you in those we often ignore. Help us live a Lent focused on freedom, generosity, and encounter. Give us hearts hungry to serve you and those who need what we have to give. Amen. Our first reading comes from Psalm 22. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed, shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. The second reading comes from Luke, the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9. At that very time, there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, 
Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year, until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good, but if not, you can cut it down. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to him, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me, listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends the reading. Repentance. In the passage of scripture that we just heard from Luke, Jesus has repentance on his mind. The actual Greek word the author quotes Jesus as referring to is metanoia. Basically, metanoia means coming to see things differently, sometimes with a sense of regret because it is too late to change something in the past that one regrets or too late to change one's path. This passage of scripture is tinged with sadness. We all know the saying that hindsight is 2020. Since 2020 is also the year that we just got through, a year filled with sadness and regret for many of us, this expression has a special resonance right now. One thing that comes through in what Jesus says is that repentance, changing your mind about something important, is sometimes necessary and almost always extremely difficult. Why is repentance so difficult? Repentance is so difficult because most people believe that they are right and are resistant to changing their minds most of the time. For many, the difficulty is that we do not all agree on appeals to a higher authority because we don't agree on how to understand a higher authority. Jesus himself questions and challenged religious authorities and was seen as a dangerous rebel by some government authorities. And the congregational tradition is an outgrowth of a group of people who rebelled and broke away from the Church of England, which itself broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. Another thing that has probably not changed is the reluctance of many to truly listen to those who we are absolutely positive are wrong. This is where Jesus distinguishes himself from the average person. Unlike most of us, Jesus has deep compassion for those with whom he disagrees, even those he knows that have murderous intentions toward him. A core teaching, a difficult teaching, but a core teaching of Jesus 
is that we should love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us. Jesus practices this. He expresses it in a deep way in this passage of scripture from Luke. This sort of patience and kindness that Jesus practices without even thinking about it can be challenging for most of us. But when people do practice this sort of love, it can be life-changing to the people that they reach out in love to. This is a photo of Megan Phelps Roper, a woman who grew up as part of the hateful Westboro Baptist Church and later became a spokesperson for the organization. Megan often posted hateful messages on the social media website Twitter. Some other Twitter users gently but insistently pointed out the contradictions in the beliefs she espoused. Eventually, she became friends with some of them in the real world, leading her to leave the church and renounce the hatefulness promoted by the church. Here is a photo of one of their hateful protests, most likely one taken at the funeral of a veteran that they are protesting at. This gentleman, a devout Jew, pointed out the contradictions between her beliefs and what the Bible actually says and helped her to rethink her philosophy. Later, when she decided to leave the church, he helped her get on her feet. Love of enemies is difficult, but it is possible and can be life-changing. This is a photo of another man who practices love of enemies. His name is Daryl Davis. He has great patience and friendliness toward those who would destroy him, and his work has borne unexpected fruits. Daryl is a musician by trade. Over the years, he has managed to convince 200 members of the Ku Klux Klan to give up their membership in the racist extremist group. Daryl has sometimes been criticized for spending his time and talents reaching out to members of such a hateful organization. But Daryl is deeply committed to this work. He's been at it for 25 years and still continues. In the modern era, people often lose their sense of basic decency when they have conversations over social media. They write things on social media that they would never say in person, but the distance afforded by the computer makes it easier to do that. And in many cases, this kind of interaction develops into a dangerous feedback loop, leading people to become more and more distanced from those who do not agree with them. Sometimes it can lead to real-life hatred and estrangements of personal relationships. The isolation many have suffered during the pandemic in the past year has led more people than ever to turn to questionable social media sources of information or in many cases disinformation. Disinformation that teaches us to regard some of our friends, family, and associates as enemies that we need to hate and fear. Now, at last, the pandemic seems to be winding down. Will we finally be able to heed the wisdom of Jesus as we seek to love those who don't always return our love? So often in our work life, in our school life, we are taught to be results-oriented. But Christianity isn't really about results. It's good to remember that loving like Jesus loves means that we are called to love others and expect nothing in return. May we all love as Jesus has taught us to love and as Jesus has provided an example in loving us. Amen. Now, let us open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive love from God and to give love 
to others in our time of prayer. Let us not fail to pray that God will touch the lives of those around us, our neighbors, our friends, and yes, those we consider enemies with God's love and truth. Loving God, some people are difficult to love, and yet you tell us that we should love them anyway. We know that our love may not have the power to transform lives, but if we pray and turn our hearts to you, nothing bad will ever come of it. God, we reach out with our love and our strength to those who need it most those whose hearts are broken, those who are struggling with difficulties in their personal lives, with health issues, with grief from losses, with the pandemic, with economic troubles, with societal strife, with other problems. God, we reach out to you with thanksgiving that you are there for us when we need you and there for others when we are not able to be. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And now with the confidence that comes from knowing that we are God's children, we join together in the prayer our Savior taught saying together, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I praise you and give you thanks, O oh Lord. May we find the road that leads to life. May we take the turns that bring right relationships. May we pause to accompany others on the way. And may we journey with God through Lent and long for the horizon and dawn. Amen. <laughs>